Hey y'all, my name is Jasmine Jones. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and you are now watching Black Girl Therapists in the Wild. And this is a little series I like to call Therapist Sips and Reviews. And today we are reviewing Soul Food 1997, a classic, of course, going with the belated Thanksgiving theme. And I am drinking some more eggnog alcohol. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Did you guys miss me last week? <laughs> I took a week off for the holidays just to kind of rec recoup and breathe and space. Went to San Diego for the weekend, a little solo peace trip to, you know, I don't know, get away for a second <laughs> from all of the things that are going on in the world that are just overwhelming. <laughs> I would suggest it for everyone who can get away in a safe way. You know, I got away, mostly spent time in the jacuzzi in my hotel room and ordering room service. So I feel like it was safe and they don't clean your rooms anymore when you when you're there. So, you know, they disinfect it when you first get to the hotel from the last people that were there, but they don't give you the room service where they come every day that you're there and clean it. So no one else is in your room but you and the person that you bring with you. I went by myself. So don't come for me about traveling. <laughs> I suggest it if you feel safe doing it. And yes, mm -hmm. I really had to put my therapist hat on for this movie. So I think I'm gonna do this like I would a family session. And in doing that, I'm going to kind of utilize Salvador Mnuchin's structured family therapy to kind of break apart what's going on in this here family here, okay? So we know that Soul Food is about a family. You got Big Mama, you got Terry, who is, I believe, the oldest sister. You have Maxine, the middle sister. You have Bird, the youngest sister. And you have Faith, the cousin, that is Big Mama's sister's child. And then you have the respected spouses, the respective spouses of the two older sisters, or actually three, the three sisters. So you have Terry's husband, Miles. You have Maxine's husband, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. Oh, and you have Bert's husband, Lim. Are these names Southern? Because I feel like they're in the city. But they feel very Southern, but I think that's just the culture. Mm -hmm. And when you think of structured family therapy, you're looking at the, the structure of the family, the boundaries of the family, the rules of the family and the hierarchy of the family. And usually structured family therapy is like the parents come before the children. And then there's a structure with the boundaries where boundaries are firm yet flexible. They can be, they can be molded and manipulated based on the situation. And then of course the rules that, you, that the family develops within itself. But you see all this mainly when there's a conflict in the family. And, you know, as a therapist, you sit back and just observe how the family in itself deals with conflict. Who, who What alliances are formed? What are the boundaries looking like? Are they very porous where no people, certain people don't have boundaries? Are they very rigid where there's no room for people to grow and do things and change and whatever? Um, are they like, you know, firm yet flexible where we can you know maneuver things based on the situation so when it comes to i was gonna say family guy <laughs> when it comes to soul food i'm going to pick terry as my main client because when you're doing structured family therapy you need a main client that everyone else just kind of branches off of and i picked terry because they did terry wrong <laughs> Terry is going through the most things emotionally in this family. And I'll let you know why. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So when we look at, let's go character by character. So the main focus is Terry. But I'm going to not start with Terry. Because we all know, as memes have shown us, <laughs> Terry 
is the hero of this fucking movie. And she has valid in her anger, her righteous, glorious anger. And she is constantly gaslit by these people who call themselves her family. So we're gonna put her to the side for now because we know what's going on with Terry. And I'm glad that people finally, you know, recognize those things and she's not, you know, posed as some bad guy for being mad that she's basically had being forced to fund this family with no support at all. Emotional, financial, nobody, not even her husband supporting her. He's out here trying to sing and dance with fucking Jodeci. <laughs> that's his, that's his band that he wants to, instead of being a lawyer, like Terry and him are lawyers, instead of being a lawyer, he wants to sing and dance with Jodeci. And you know, singing they they try to they try to make it seem like his, the little band he is it's just a little band no it's Jodeci and Babyface <laughs> so anyways we're going to start big mama now people in families tend to have roles that they're assigned you know if you think of like the scapegoat the person that gets all the blame in the family, the nurturer, the person that, you know, is the listener that people go to. So we we consciously and subconsciously assign roles to people in families based off the boundaries and rules that we have made for the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking at Big Mama, I would say her role is power broker and nurturer. Power brokers of the family are there to maintain the hierarchy of the family. She cooks every Sunday. She maintains the traditions from slavery times of eating pork and fats and things that killed her. And, you know, she maintains these family get togethers, which is all of our families tend to, you know, black families tend to all usually have that big mama role, that, that grandmotherly figure that was the matriarch of our families from uh, slavery till now, maybe even before then, who knows? <laughs> but let's just keep it from slavery till now because that means that all of our traditions are based on trauma, which is mentioned in this movie where she says that during slavery, we just had to take the bad parts of the meat and put it together and figure it out, you know? So that's why we eat chitlins and nasty things from the pig that we don't have to. So. I think it's it's important to, to notice that a lot of black traditions, even traditions from other cultures of color that have come across white suprem- supremacy. I was watching this video about Filipinos and apparently Filipinos had very healthy diets before they were colonized and introduced to trans fats and fried foods and things like that. I'll post it below so you guys don't think I'm being racist. <laughs> like white supremacy made us unhealthy (laughs) and now we call it culture and tradition and don't get me wrong i love a good fried chicken i love a good green pot of greens and yams and all the things but i can't eat that all the time Uh -uh. big mama got her leg cut off for a reason and then she had a stroke for a reason and then she woke up and died for a reason so anyway she is the power broker maintains the hierarchy and also the nurturer of the family she's the emotional support that foundational like where everyone else gets their morals and their beliefs and all their things from and you know she ups and has diabetes gets a surgery to get her leg cut off because it's rotting from the inside out because that's what happens in diabetes sometimes and has a stroke during surgery and is in a coma. Now the family is in kind of like this emotional chaos of not knowing what to do. Kind of like our families now where we're all like adults and all the old people in the family that used to cook and pass down traditions and do family holiday shit are like dead and shit and so now you're like what do we do you know and all that toxic shit that those matriarchs in the family were maintaining because everybody in the family respects the matriarch and tries to maintain the traditions that the matriarch has and we'll 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 shut that shit down at least for a day to eat their feelings away. There you go. (laughs) 
Because that's what I saw it as. I started, I was really analyzing. I was, I was like, we just are eating our feelings here. That's what these traditional Sunday dinners are. We're maintaining ourselves throughout the week, even though there's bullshit going on in our lives, just to eat our feelings away, you know? And when we get sad and bullshit happens, we lean on the matriarch and cry and she has to maintain our emotions and things and stuff like that. But once the matriarch is gone, now we have to figure it out for our fucking selves. <laughs> she even said... She, she even said it when she was dying. She said it to Ahmed. He's the one, the little child of Maxine. And she said, she goes, you know, the family is falling apart. They're going crazy. And he's like, yes, yes, we need you. And she's like, I'm tired. I want to die. Which I've seen in older people and dying people. When they're ready to go, they're ready to go. When we are all ready to go, something clicks on that brings us peace with death. And I don't understand it yet. I don't want to understand it. I'm still praying to God that I will go up in the fiery chariot, chariot alive and well, just like he did for Elijah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Come for me. <laughs> I don't need to feel that. I don't need to feel my body dying, you know, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's going off topic. But, you know, I do that sometimes. <laughs> So anyways, she's the matriarch. The family goes into chaos then because now who is the matriarch? Now who is the person that we turn to for support and guidance and traditions and things that we can hold on to to pretend like our lives aren't problematic and our emotions aren't fucked up and shit all the time? Well, I think Maxine is the one that tries to step in and do that. So Maxine is played by Vivica Fox. <laughs> this is like the third Vivica Fox. You know what? Why isn't Vivica Fox still famous? You know, we. I think it's because she had that ratchet moment where she dated 50 Cent and then we, we didn't take her serious anymore. And then she got that plastic surgery where now her cheeks look really big and swollen. And we stopped because Nia Long... She plays Bird. We still take her seriously. We still look at her and be like, ooh, it's Nia Long, girl, get it. Even if she is in crappy movies sometimes, we still take her seriously. We don't take Vivica Fox as seriously. And I'm just like, she was like in a lot of movies. She was famous, famous in the 90s. What happened? <laughs> Tangents. Anyways, I think Maxine, Vivica Fox, tries to take that spot. And, you know, she tries to continue the family dinners even after Big Mama has her stroke. She wants to have a Sunday dinner the next day. Terry's like, no, bitch. Like, I'm not going to just have a Sunday dinner after my mom is in the hospital. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and so, you know, Maxine is trying to take on this pseudo nurturer spot this pseudo power player spot you know trying to trying to trying to take that on for herself and you know it's kind of there but it's not because she's a manipulator and she's a manipulator because her husband K keith kelly <laughs> keenan K what's her name what's his name her husband used to go with terry and she so we're getting we're getting the story so Ahmad Maxine's little son is narrating so we're getting the story from Ahmad out of his little child mind so I'm not gonna say she stole her husband from her but she stole her husband she stole her boyfriend from her you know so you know they've been at each other's throats ever since and it's just kind of like at some point, yes, Terry should have just accepted it and moved on. But at another point, I feel like, you know, Maxine, you should feel bad about this. Like, really bad. Like, she apologized when she got caught fucking in the car. But it's like, you should feel, like, bad. And then she makes her feel even worse when her husband fucks Faith. And then she's like we know that your husband did some fuck shit but you can't take it out on the family terry bitch i would have socked her <laughs> this is repeated trauma how are you telling her not to be mad at everybody again <laughs> i would be like okay girl what can we do to support you in this? Because I know that this is a reminder of things that you don't want to be reminded of. Talk to us. You know, no, no one cares about Terry, but we'll get to Terry. So anyways, Maxie, Max is trying to be, you know, 
the head of the family. She's trying to take control, even though she doesn't want to pay for anything. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. And then Bird is the youngest. I feel like she's the cheerleader. She tries to be positive and bring everybody together. So Bird basically still had the dinner the next day, the, the little dinner thing. She can't cook. She's, she, you know, she's a me. I can't cook. Jesus is going to send me a husband that can. So <laughs> she's the cheerleader. That's the role. She's just the positive, trying to keep everybody together, trying to see the good in everything. She made the dinner. The cornbread was burnt on top, but she still served it. I mean, even I would know, at least cut the top off if it's burnt on top. But, you know, she still served it. So whatever. And she tries. And nobody comes because everybody's mad at each other. Terry and Maxine are at each other's throats. And so they're the main people. They bring their husbands and uh, Maxine brings her kids. And then there's this nasty ass old preacher man that comes that fills everybody up. And see, I'm not the one nigga. I will cut you. <laughs> Don't touch me. And he comes and he fills everybody up and it's weird but the so that he was the only one there and he ate i guess he it looked like he was trying to eat some of bird's food and then there's the uncle that lives upstairs it's big mama's brother and i think he has dementia or something and he just stays in his room he just stays in his room all the time big mama is like watching him and taking care of him and things like that so he's just like an outlier he has dementia he has issues and they just allow him to be up there in his room and so she brings some food to his room because that's what big mama does every sunday brings some food from the table so that he can eat it and he pushes the plate out the room because the food is nasty yes it's disgusting <laughs> and then we come to Faith. She shows up before Big Mama's surgery at the last Sunday dinner that they have with Big Mama. And so she's Big Mama's sister's daughter. Faith is a full black sheep. You know, they have black sheep and scapegoat together. But I feel scapegoat is a little bit different than black sheep because... Black sheep is just like, we put everything on you. And black sheeps don't have to be there. They could just disappear and go away. They're the black sheep. They're the invisible family member. And so Faith is just like, she takes advantage of Big Mama. She she um, had Big Mama buy her a car, never paid Big Mama back. She was arrested, had Big Mama pay her bail and come get her out of jail. All sorts of hood rat shit that is unnecessary and things like that. So Faith is just like this black sheep that strolls into the house and now she's staying with terry and with her husband miles um because she needs a place to stay and this let's, let's get to terry terry i feel like she has she's mad about certain things but she has no boundaries bitch say no say no so terry is a lawyer her husband's a lawyer and the whole family relies on her to pay for big shit so terry's paying for the mortgage on the house Terry pays for big shit like college tuition and paid for Bird's wedding. Yes. So that's how the movie started off at Bird's wedding. And she paid for all of that. And uh, like everybody is leaning on her. So the role she plays is almost like a power player, but more so like a scapegoat. Like she maintains a financial hierarchy in the family, but they treat her like shit. And when she brings it up that she pays for everything, they gaslight her to make her feel bad. Like she's that's what she's supposed to be doing. Instead of following Lem around, maybe she'd pay me back that loan. Terry. You are not hurting because you gave Bird money for that shot. I loaned her money, Max. As far as you're concerned, I'm an ATM. Automatically Terry's money. See, I wouldn't pay. See? I don't know. No. No, no, no. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. I've been like that rich auntie that comes in occasionally and smiles at everybody while everybody's struggling. Like, oh. You all haven't got it together yet? Maxine, you dropped out of college at 19. Like, you could go back. You could take some classes, honey. You don't have to rely on Terry to pay for everything. But then at the same time, Terry has no boundaries. But I, I, it's a, a double-edged sword because I feel like 
she's not strong minded enough. That's what it is. Because they gaslight her when she brings it up and makes her feel bad like she's supposed to be doing this. But at the same time, if you're a little bit more strong minded, you'll be able to fight against that. Like, fuck that shit. I'm not supposed to be doing shit. I'm gonna do what the fuck I want. But they gaslight her with love to make her so she doesn't have her boundaries are porous. So we got the rigid. We are not letting it you through. You shall not pass. <laughs> you cannot pass. I, I am afraid to leave the house, so I will never leave the house. I hate hate men, so I will never date ever. I hate gay people so i'm gonna be homophobic always nothing you can do will change it all the things that you just will not be moved on that can become toxic one day if you do not move um porous is like i'm just gonna allow shit to happen i'm just gonna allow the things to happen even though i don't want them to happen so i have a few things for terry because she plays a lot of roles and it's no wonder that she's angry upset and done so basically she is the hero of the family. She played that role when that whole scene where they did the flashback of Maxine fucking her boyfriend and all this other shit. It was in the middle of Terry. Uh, at, later on in the movie, Terry was arguing with Maxine and telling her that I've always been the one that, you know, was, was straight laced and did what I needed to do. And so she has this kind of hero mentality of being the one that gets good grades and does good and, and get uh, rises above what's going on in this family. And so, you know, she's the hero of the family, that hero mentality that she either put on herself or was placed on her, you know, cause she was always home studying and doing the things while Maxine was out partying and fucking niggas. Nothing wrong with just fucking niggas, but it's like, don't gaslight and manipulate people because you didn't do what the fuck you wanted to. <laughs> she's also a thinker, you know, shit go happens in the family. She has to be the one to think it through and figure it out. Maxine is kind of a thinker. But Maxine thinks up to the point where money's involved. And then when money's involved, she's like, Terry, you, you can, you can. And she said that shit too. She was like, you can pay for mama's hospital bills. You know, you could do that. We'll just, we'll just pay you back in installments. How are you going to assume that Miles and Terry, because they're lawyers, are going to pay all of the hospital bills while everybody else pays them back in installments? You don't ask you don't, you just assume that's fucked up. I don't care. I don't care. It's all your moms. It's all your moms. Like bird works at a, at a, at, at the beauty shop. She works at the, she makes money. Um, they never, did they say, let me know if they said what Maxine does. Cause I feel like they didn't say that she did anything. And I've never, I didn't see her working or doing anything, but having babies and <laughs> Kenny, that's her husband. Kenny looked like he worked. I think he works at a factory or some shit. I don't fucking know. Mm-hmm. And so, what else is she? Cause she, there was, I put multiple shit for her because I was like, why is she? She's just tired. Um, escape financial mediator. So she is a hero, a thinker, a rescuer. Rescues the family from all the issues that goes on. A scapegoat. So if shit goes on in the family or she brings up problems, they all look at her like she's crazy. They all form an alliance against her and put a boundary against her and say no you got this so there's a rigid boundary against her like no that's your place that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to spend the money <laughs> and she's what else what else what else and she's the financial mediator so she figures out the finances so a hero a thinker a rescuer a scapegoat and a financial mediator a lot of shit to be in a family you know financial mediator is of course you know she mediates the fucking money <laughs> you know and uh, you know it's mediator by itself okay i added the financial part because she doesn't necessarily mediate the emotional issues or anything like that but she does mediate the financial ones and so she's a financial mediator. Everyone turns to her. Everyone like it's fucked up. Like, how much can a person take? And she was lamenting about this in the movie too. Like.
like, I always feel like I lose the ones that I love. No, bitch, you allow these using ass people to use you and you know that they're using ass people like her husband miles he has the audacity to be like well i have a dream of wanting to be a musician and you don't support my dream and that bitch do you support her as she's paying for her whole entire family and she's emotionally exhausted and she's tired do you ever have conversations with her about that? And she's trying to stay on the straight and narrow because that's all she knows. Maybe bringing that up to her, like telling her, like, you don't have to stay like this either. You can have a fantastical dream and sing with Jodeci too. He never sings though. He just plays the piano and then, you know, it's, 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 it's you know, sings in the background or some shit with the background singers. He doesn't sing. And it was funny because when he had his performance, Everybody on that motherfucking stage, except for Babyface, had a solo. <laughs> Miles didn't have a solo. I mean, Babyface didn't have a solo, but Babyface ain't gotta have a solo. You know how Babyface sound. They could at least pretend it, they could have gave Miles a voiceover or something. I don't, anyways, who is there for Terry? So yes, yeah, she's gonna be mad. She plays all these roles. Nobody supports her. And then now her mother's dying and everybody's expecting her to do more. So she can't even grieve that her mom is sick and dying. And uh, she's just like, she got fed up at one point and was like, well, I'm just going to sell the house, you know, because if y'all want to pay the medical bills and I'll just sell the house and shit or some shit. Or I think that came after her, her mom died. I think that came after she just she just said fuck y'all niggas i'm selling the house because she is the guardian or the the person that has to deed on the house and stuff and then maxine and bird have lunch with her and have the audacity that's when they said that shit about oh well you know you you need to not take this out on the whole family just because bitch you fucked her boyfriend and married him and now you have three children <laughs> She needs a moment. She needs a moment. Okay, that's traumatic. But you know, nobody cares. Nobody cares about the work workhorse of the family. Because that's basically what she, she's the workhorse of the family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so Terry's out here just, just kicking it, doing it, doing all that she can to financially keep this family stable. And it's the day of Maxine's anniversary party. She gets home with Ahmad. We'll get to Ahmad in a minute because I have so many just... This child should not be in the place that he's in, but whatever. Um, she gets home with Ahmad and they go upstairs and to Miles' studio on the roof. And I just feel a type of way because I feel like... Miles took $5,000 out of their savings for studio time. Yet he has a studio on the roof, sir. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it looked pretty put together. It looked pretty decent. Why do you need $5,000 for a studio time if you have a studio, sir? There are motherfuckers on SoundCloud that were, that are in their basements with, you know, the little styrofoam cup things on the wall and they make it and they do why do you need studio time if you can afford a studio on the roof you know what <laughs> they all did her wrong so she goes upstairs to see where miles and faith are so they can she can get them for the party miles is fucking faith and it's been this tension build up the whole movie and she's been flirting with him and He's been looking at her and he's mad because Terry doesn't support him and his music. And it's like her mother is in the hospital with a coma and you're bringing up this music shit and she has to pay for everything and nobody cares about her fucking emotions and you're bringing up this music shit. Okay. <laughs> You know, I'm just, I don't like seeing people who are pretty decent people being taken advantage of because she's a decent person. She's just mad. She's just mad and hurt. No, let's take away the anger. Anger is a mask for other emotions usually. She's hurt. She's hurt. She feels betrayed. She feels like nobody cares about her. She feels alone and that she doesn't have anybody. 
I'm sure she has friends. They never show these people and their friends outside of the family. I get because the movie's focused on them. But it's like her whole family is like using her. Even Big Mama. Like when she complains about spending money at the dinner table on Sunday, Big Mama's just like, well, you know, don't complain. Stop, blah, blah. This is patronizing her and shit. And they gonna tell Maxine that Maxine is the strongest one in the family. I'm like, why is Maxine the strongest one in the family? What does strength mean to you? Does strength mean that you have to put up with a bunch of shit and be emotionally damaged and just continue to go on when you could have fixed that shit and put up boundaries and been like, fuck them niggas and put them in a position where they had to figure it out on their own either they'll sink or swim? Because I feel like this strength that they keep talking about in this movie is not strength. Um, Maxine is manipulative. And I want, I am on the verge of calling her trash, but I feel like I'm just going to stick with manipulative because I've seen worse families, family cycles of trauma where we are passing down sexual molestation and alcoholism and shit like that. All of this is a conversation. In a big family session, of course, this is a family session and a conversation amongst these people and these people admitting that they do fuck shit and they lean on Terry and it's not right and they need to figure out their own individual financial problems without leaning on Terry because everybody else in the family is pretty decently happy. Like Maxine and Kenny are, you know, fucking and having babies and whatever. (laughs) bird is she was pretty decent she's pretty decent yes she got married to this nigga limb who's you know a felon or whatever because he sold some drugs or whatever but she works at a hair salon she's doing what she's dreamed of she's about to have a baby she's pregnant you know she seems emotionally stable you know emotionally sound i guess um, uh, Terry's the only one that has these deep emotional issues and appears to be angry all the fucking time when she's not really angry. Her feelings are hurt and she feels alone and abandoned. See, this is how people commit suicide. Nobody pays attention. You don't give a fuck. She could have killed herself. See, that's why I'm always trying my best to be nice to people and be understanding because either they're going to kill themselves or they're going to kill you or they're <laughs> I've been watching true crimes all day. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's my hobby. I'll sit for hours and just watch like true crime shows like and just solidify in my mind that these niggas is crazy. Mm, and it's mostly niggas just killing bitches or going after me. this nigga was stalking this hoe and in the in the 90s with this big ass camcorder on his shoulder just videotaping her doing stuff and i'm just like this is what we're doing this is the mental anyways <laughs> just be nice be kind to people try to understand try to look past their anger and their stuff and just really see like what is going on here that's all i'm saying just try try to care more about people and then if you don't want to care just leave them the fuck alone don't try to take shit from them and manipulate them just because they have poor boundaries and shit and their emotions are all fucked up just leave people the fuck alone but yeah anyways Mm -hmm. she goes upstairs she sees faith and miles fucking and you know after they fuck you know she leaves and goes and she's mad so terry leaves takes a mod a mod doesn't see them fucking she leaves goes to maxine's house and she's mad while she's at maxine's house but they finish up fucking and then they separate like oh gross you know like that gross feeling you get after masturbating like oh so disgusting just trash and then they quietly just separate and walk away and then they both end up at maxine's house and Terry is just in the kitchen. She just needs space. She just needs to be away from these motherfuckers that will not listen to her, will not talk, will not. She just needs to be away. And they all track her down in the kitchen. I think Maxine comes in first and asks her what's wrong or some shit like that. Or Bird, one of them does. And 
and Terry's just standing there. I think she's about to tell him. And then everybody comes in the kitchen. Um, Kenny, Miles is in there, and Bird is still in there, or wh whoever came in there first. And they're trying to figure out how to pay for Mama's medical bills. And that's when Maxine says that dumb shit about, well, you and Miles will pay and we'll pay installments. I would have beat her fucking ass. And then Terry just goes the fuck off. She explodes. Rightly so. She picks up a knife and damn near stabs this nigga. She's talking about the family fucked me. And I was just like, yes, they did, bitch. Yes, they did. And she picks up a knife and damn near stabs that nigga. Then tries to stab Faith. And I just feel like, you know what? A person can only take so much. I mean, she didn't kill him. I mean, she, she exploded, but she didn't kill him. They got her. They held her back. You know, she probably would have cut him a little bit. I don't think she would have killed him. <laughs> but I feel like the emotions were valid. That's the thing. The emotions were valid. Because there's only so... That's what I was saying before. There's only so much you can take. She is like the hero of the family as a teenager, going to college trying to maintain good grades, trying to maintain this appearance. Then she's the scapegoat and made to feel bad whenever fuck shit happens to her. You know, Maxine fucking Kenny and stealing him away from her. Faith fucking her husband. You know, she's supposed to make to be to feel bad and focus on the money. She's a financial mediator where she has to come in and figure out the money piece. She she's just everything and it's tiring and it's ex it's exhausting. It's like she plays so many roles. It's like how many roles can you play before you lose who you fuck you really are? You know, cuz you're one image for the people you surround yourself with and your family, your friends. And you're another image when you're by yourself and you're your whole self and shit like that. And it's like if you don't have not one person in your life that sees that you sees who you really are then it's like you, you you're just by yourself and it's fucked up so yeah you know justified so we get to the end of the movie ahmed talks to big mama and big mama's trying to tell him something so throughout this whole movie ahmed has been like the mediator cheerleader so he is the mediator where he's trying to get the family back together in his own little childish mind. He feels like he can get the family back together. He wants his family to go back to normal where everybody was happy. He doesn't really understand what's all going on behind the scenes like niggas fucking niggas bitches. Lim ended up going to prison because he was mad at Bird because Bird got him a job through her ex and stuff like that. He he doesn't understand all that shit. He just understands that his family's mad at him at, at each other and they're fighting and everything's not normal. And he doesn't want that. So he's going from person to person. You know, this is after big mama dies. He's going from person to person trying to get them all to come to the house on Sunday and, uh, you know, have one more family dinner. And so he lies and tells each person that big mama told him where her secret money was. Cause apparently her husband owns stores and the laundry mat and all this other stuff. And she would hide money and save it. And everybody in the family thinks this is a myth. But, you know, he just uses this as an excuse and says, well, Big Mama told me where the money was and she said it was for me. And so, you know, he tells everybody this and gets them all to come to the house. And it's this awkward scene where they're all sitting at the table and he's all happy. And then they're all eating food and all this other shit. And then... Uh, Terry and Miles and Faith have it out. So uh, Maxine sends Ahmed to the kitchen with his sister so that Terry and Miles can have it out. And I just feel like Ahmed's role in this mediator, cheerleader type shit is just like, he's a child. And they try to set it up like it's one of those cute little, you know, Christmassy type, thanksgiving -y type movies where the child is trying to get their parents back together and it's cute and shit. But there's some deep shit that's happening here and the child should not be involved in trying to keep his family together. You know, he's like little, like he looks like he's 10 or some shit, 11, one of them. And it's just like, I was just side-eyeing it. I was just like, why is he in this position it's it i mean it sounds like it's partially his personality type like he is helpful little little man and things like that little child um 
but also it sounds like there's this push to like Lim, for example, is telling him about how he lost his job and people won't hire a felon and shit like that. And I'm just like, why are you opening your soul to an 11 year old and telling him about how you can't get a job? Like why? Maybe it's just this person. I don't know. But I was just kind of side eyeing it like because I work with kids and shit like that. I'm just like, would I tell a child that? Would I condone my child just going around? I don't think Maxine really knew that he was going around listening to people and things like that and and being a mediator and whatever. But I don't know. I just side eyed that. I just felt like it's kind of like in Candyman when that white woman was trying to get that little boy to show her around projects and stuff. And I was like, he's a fucking seven year old. What are you doing? (laughs) So those children should be innocent and play and yes yeah, sad things will happen but play where are your friends <laughs> so they all meet up at big mama's house they have a dinner and then faith miles terry have it out and uh, faith uh terry is just like i just feel like everybody i love leaves me and that's how it ends and you know they don't really fix anything they just Terry just feels like everybody she loves leaves her and I'm just like no one's gonna say anything about that like we love you Terry we're not gonna leave you and we're here for you and we know this nigga did some fuck shit but you will always be our sister and we don't give a fuck about this nigga and his fuck shit no they invite him to like he can like after the movie's over apparently they get a divorce and he still is invited to come to Sunday dinners Let's keep the traumatic men in Terry's life. You know, Kenny is already there because he's married to Maxine. Um, Let's keep Miles there. Let's keep him coming to family dinners and random shit. And it's just like, okay. Okay. I feel so bad for Terry. I feel like it wasn't resolved. I feel like, you know, the major issue... The last part of the movie, the uncle comes downstairs. The kitchen is set on fire because um, Ahmed leaves the the towel on the stove or some shit. They put the fire out. The uncle comes downstairs, uh, Big Mama's brother. He's carrying his little TV that he carries around. And he scares them and they spray fire extinguisher spray in his face. He drops the television and all the money that Big Mama had hidden is there. And so I guess they use that to pay the mortgage on the house. I don't know. But... I feel like that magic money that Big Mama is hidden is not going to fix the deep issues in the family. Like, what is stopping them from still asking Terry for money? What is stopping them from leaning on Terry like that? Did they invest the money? Maybe they, they Terry, inv- I feel like Terry might have invested it. So whenever they need money, they can, I would, if I was Terry, that's what I would do. If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna read these hoes and say no, <laughs> invest the money, <laughs> So that if they ever need money for shit, like a wedding or, you know, bailing somebody out of jail, they can use that pot of money. They ain't got to ask you for shit. You know, do something, do something. Cause I feel like this movie still ended with Terry being asked out, having to see this nigga miles every Sunday because he wants to come by and eat chicken and greens and shit. And we're still perpetuating trauma as culture. You know, because at the end of the day, yes, coming together in our pain can develop into a cultural thing, but it doesn't have to. Like, there are traditions in tons of cultures that aren't built on trauma, you know, like, look at all of the, like, the Oshuns in Africa, in them countries. I forgot what countries they're from, but all the gods and goddesses and things. Look at the Greek gods and goddesses. Look at, you know, the Christmas tree. Or, um, what else didn't come from trauma? I was going to say the Jewish candelabra thing, but I think that came from them running away or some shit, and then they had to, like, save the oil while they were hiding and shit. So, no, that's not... (laughs) 
but we don't have to. We don't have to keep perpetuating trauma in our culture. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, why we always got to have soul food for the holidays? Why can't it be mixed of like some 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 healthy food and some soul food? You know why people got to be made to feel bad for eating healthy food and shit? You know like niggas is dying, like niggas is dying in droves from like heart disease and blood pressure issues and diabetes and all sorts of shit because you sit up in there eating hog head cheese. I'm not trying, and I'm not trying to be no uppity black bitch. Because like I said, I will take me some fried chicken. Like when it's that time of the month, I swear I sat and ate Popeyes every day for... Because <laughs> I get these cravings. You know, one month it was red meat and I had to have like steak. <laughs> you know, or some carne asada tacos or some shit, some red meat. <laughs> So I'm not trying to be like the bougie black bitch. I'm just saying though, like, I'm not going to down nobody because they don't eat that shit or they're trying to tell me to eat a little bit healthier without being judgmental and shit. Like, I'm not going to down nobody for that. So yeah, that was Soul Food 1997. How old was I? I was 10. Yeah, my first decade. <laughs> And we use some, a little little drunken family structure model from Salvador Mnuchin. An interesting name, Mnuchin. But then motherfuckers can't say Tamika. You know, we can say Dostoyevsky. What's his name? See, I can't even say that nigga name. Dostoyevsky. Das but you can't say Tamika. That's on Dostoyevsky. How do you say that nigga name? See, I could say it earlier. I think it's alcohol. Whatever. Dosk Doschowski Doschowski stop 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 see now I'm speaking in tongues let me stop <laughs> and you know so we look we looked at the hierarchy of the family and we see that you know Big Mama was at the top everybody kind of followed her Maxine is trying to be at the top but I think at the end Terry and Maxine are vying for the roles because of the whole we found money shit so now maybe we don't have to lean on Terry so much but you know and then we looked at boundaries Terry has very porous boundaries and then there is an alliance of Bird and Maxine and Kenny even Miles all against Terry basically you know there's like no you can't complain about how we mistreat you that is not a part of it and that goes into rules like she can't complain about how she's mistreated you know we all have rules in our family so you know it was a rule in my with my mom can't cuss in front of your parents like I would have never done that shit when I was little like fuck this shit it's disrespectful. I'll cuss all day with my friends, but no, you don't cuss in front of your mom. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, you don't. You mind your business. You don't ask your parents a whole bunch of damn questions that have nothing to do with you because you're a child. You know, rules and shit. So the rule here is Terry pays for things <laughs> and she's not allowed to complain. And if she does complain, we're going to gaslight her and make her feel bad and make her feel like she's just, you know, why are you talking so much, Terry? Shut up. You know, so there's like an alliance against Terry. Even Big Mama was involved in that, you know, and then there's an alliance between Big Mama and Maxine. Like she's, it's obvious Maxine is her favorite. She calls her the strongest one in the family, you know, and it's like, I'm still confused how she's the strongest one yet pays for nothing nothing how are you the strongest but terry went to college and did things and pays for everything no one's saying you have to go to college to be strong and all this other shit but she's a manipulator how are you strong and you're a manipulator but whatever so there's like this whole alliance bond between big mama and between maxine and you know it's just a lot and there's this kind of enmeshment with Ahmad being in all the adults business. Like that's not some shit that I would have done as a kid. Like I'm not gonna go around to each of my aunts and uncles and ask, cause that's not something that, you know, 
he don't do that. This is an enmeshment with Ahmad, with the adults telling him grown people business. And he's like a child. Like, why does he need to know that? Like, yeah, that might be his personality and he might snoop shit out himself. But why are you telling him these things? I'm like, Ahmad, that's not your business. You're a kid. Let's go eat some candy and ice cream and watch cartoons and shit. Why are you asking me questions about grown people stuff? I was straight up asking that. And you would have just been sitting there looking like it because that's the structure of his family and they allow him to do that shit. Nobody checks that shit. So, you know, maybe, you know, I just feel like there's some things he didn't need to know. That's all. I mean, if it's his personality, that's fine. But there are some things he did not need to know. (laughs) And that is on the adults to put that boundary there so that he does not know those things. (laughs) And they didn't. So there's an enmeshment. There's an enmeshment with Terry, you know, basically being the foundation of the family in secret. Like she has to pay for everything and she cannot complain. You know, she has to be the support beam for this family. And if she wasn't there, everything would fall apart. They would lose the house because she's paying the mortgage. Bird would have probably had a a courthouse wedding because she ain't got no money for no fucking real wedding. (laughs) And, you know, even Lim would have stayed in jail after he got... And the thing is, with that whole situation, because I felt a type of way when Maxine was talking to Bird at the end of the movie about how... This is when Bird told her that she was pregnant, right? This was after the lunch with um, Terry to tell her that they were going to stop her from selling the house. After this is, I think this is after Big Mama died, too. And so... Max, uh, Bird tells Maxine that she's pregnant and Maxine was just like, you know, you, you shouldn't have told your ex to get Lim a job. You know, men are sensitive and such and whatnot. And they need to f- be made to feel like a man. Is he a baby? Is he a baby? Why do women have to do whatever the fuck we can do to get by? But niggas have to be coddled like He has to be able to do that for himself. But women are using every fucking resource we have to get what the fuck we need without doing illegal shit as much as we can without doing illegal shit. You know, before we get to that point where we might have to do illegal shit. Niggas, we have to coddle them and, you know, we we can't go out on that same limb with niggas because they're sensitive and they need to be made to feel like men isn't that some shit you would you would isn't that some shit isn't that the way you would treat a child like you you can't you can't you can't tell her that she's only three she doesn't need to see these scary movies and things because she's just a baby why are we seeing men as not human beings why are we not treat? I would have looked at niggas straight in the eye like you had a job though, right? You had a job and you had money coming in. I didn't fuck that nigga. He gave me and uh, us an opportunity for you to have a job. Stop being a fucking bitch. Take the job so we can have some money because I'm pregnant and I don't care right now. <laughs> See, it's like, I don't know. And so that's why when I say Maxine is a pseudo nurturer, it's like, don't, how are you trying to give Bird advice about how sensitive niggas are? I'm sens- I'm a bit, I'm a woman. I'm sensitive too. <laughs> Shit. You know, like, I'm just like, that whole thing had me side eyeing it. Like, fuck that nigga I love him I want him to have a job so I did the best that I could do to make sure he had what he had because what he was doing for himself wasn't working and we need money okay I wasn't gonna fuck this nigga I wasn't gonna do shit with this nigga I just needed to make sure that this nigga got a job and I would have showed up with Lim to the dinner that she agreed to go on with what's his name Seaman <laughs> I think his name was Simeon what the fuck who picked that name who picked that name you know you know you wanted to say semen you know you wanted to say semen anyways i would have showed up to dinner me and lim like oh my god we're here we're here bitch for dinner it's like you got me fucked up you got me fucked up like these niggas are sensitive and it's it's partially it's like we 
feed into that shit. Like they're supposed to be coddled like babies so they can feel like men. Why can't you feel like men just by being a fucking man? (laughs) Why do I have to coddle you and keep things from you and not do certain things because your emotions are sensitive? If we got to do what we got to do, we got to do what the fuck we got to do. And you need to be on board. We're a team. We're a partnership. The fuck is wrong with you? And then for her to tell her that is just like, no, fuck that. If I have to ask my ex for some shit, you know, and we ended amicably. He wasn't abusive or crazy or some stupid shit like that. You know, we, you know, we got boundaries. Um, Then I'm going to do what the fuck I need to do. The end. <laughs> so, yeah, she's like a pseudo nurturer, like tell me that shit what are you talking about i did what the fuck i had to do (laughs) you know you can't ask your ex to get your man a job he needs to be able to feel like a man and you're not making him feel like a man why can't he feel like a man by his motherfucking self (laughs) why do i have to be involved with making him feel like anything we need money i don't give a fuck how he feels (laughs) He needs to stop being a little bitch. <laughs> this is why. This is why I'm single, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, bitch gonna be single. <laughs> Anyways, you know. What did y'all think of the movie? Do you remember? I'm sure some of y'all watched Soul Food this weekend, Thanksgiving, whatever. How'd you like it? Did you enjoy it? Was it reminiscent, or did it cr- make you cringe at some parts and just go? why 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 are they so mean and why are they so catty and why are they coddling this nigga just because he's a nigga (laughs) but yeah i hope you enjoyed this review and later days